Um, the reason why I find Konza Technopolis interesting is because it, it, it came after a long period of planning and specifically in the 2000s, um, uh, Kenya emerged out of a, out of a kind of um, a long period of very slow economic uh, growth. And, and so the country was kind of like, um, had its first kind of multi-party elections after many years. And um, part of this uh, sort of period uh, included kind of like thinking about ways of uh, kind of boosting economic growth and shifting from an economy that was mo mostly kind of supported by agriculture and traditional sectors into kind of more advanced services. And one of the things that came about in these years was um, a discussion around what kind of new economies should Kenya embrace to uh, boost and foster economic growth. And the plan that was developed in, 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 in those years actually identified digital services and business process of shoring, which actually kind of are a part of um, digital, uh, part of the digital economy as kind of like key uh, uh, economic areas that the state should be an investor in. And within that strategy, uh, we have for the first time the mention of Konza Technopolis as a techno park that was kind of designed with the idea of kind of concentrating all the infrastructural needs um, in terms of kind of like digital connectivity that the business process of shoring and digital uh, services need to actually, um, you know, uh, become viable. So the idea of the plan that was Kenya Vision 2030, the on ongoing developmental plan of the of the Kenyan uh, of the Kenyan state as a whole, identified this kind of like satellite city outside of Nairobi to deliver on that promise. Uh, and and that that is the kind of um, the kind of overarching narrative around Konza that it is about dethroning agriculture as the main economy of Kenya and replacing it uh, with uh, digital services. And we can see, if we look at data, we can see some steps in that direction because um, Konza was not the only project that um, the ICT Ministry and the Kenyan Treasury supported after this decision, but um, it was part of a number of initiatives, including, for example, the promotion of uh, uh, digital connectivity uh, by switching from satellite to uh, undersea cables, the promotion of mobile um, money, the building uh, of a very capillary um, uh, um, hardwired broadband, which is quite unique in its kind of, um, um, in its kind of um, uh, uh, extension uh, uh, in, uh, in the African context. And so you had all these initiatives. And so if you look at data today, you see that um, uh, digital services are one of the main contributors to GDP growth. So to GDP, GDP growth, sorry. And um, also the growth of digital services has been uh, much higher than any other sector of the economy over the last decade. So these are the kind of opportunities that are seen uh, by the Kenyan state. And that's kind of why Cons is still uh, very much uh, a key point of the developmental agenda uh, of the state. I think um, to answer this question, we need to look at two things. One is the fact uh, of the moment when uh, this uh, plan, Kenya Vision 2030, was conceived and the moment in which uh, CONSA was, um, uh, was first kind of launched as an idea. It was around this time uh, uh, that um, fundamentally um, um, Kenya um, was so-called kind of uh, looking east, it was starting kind of looking for alternative alternative uh, sources of development finance and sources uh, of kind of foreign direct, direct investment. And there were many reasons for this. One was that um, traditional Western partners uh, were not so inclined to fund uh, turnkey projects um, any longer. They had not been for a while. Uh, Kenya had kind of experienced uh, almost three decades, at least two decades of structural adjustment uh, programs. So there was very little appetite um, on, on the part of kind of traditional Western partners to fund large scale projects. And so uh, the Kibaki government and then the following government uh, under uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, they started looking uh, at alternative sourcing sources. And of course, China is uh, one of these partners and definitely one, uh, one uh, the most important one as it is the largest uh, holder now of uh, Kenya's bilateral debt and also uh, Kenya, Kenya's um, a major uh, economic partner at the moment. But it wasn't just China, and it, um, it wasn't just China, it was South Korea, it was Japan. You'll see that in many of these kind of large-scale projects, 
these countries were involved either in the planning either as advisors or uh, even as uh, funders and it wasn't just uh, South Korea Japan and China but it was also uh, other um, um, uh, countries that had had a similar kind of trajectory in terms of shifting from uh, say an oil economy or more traditional sector um, uh, oriented economy towards uh, advanced services and the example of Malaysia is um, one that really resonates because actually the, um, the body of experts that was uh, formed to advise the government in the 2000s to, deliver, to kind of create this uh, uh, development plan even visited Malaysia um, uh, to see what the Malaysian government had done to uh, implement a, a, a number of projects around um, uh, uh, boosting the uh, innovation economy uh, in Malaysia. And the interesting fact about that is that um, uh, one of the things that the Malaysian government had done was to create this kind of like new city outside of Kuala Lumpur called Cyberjaya, where basically the idea was to kind of create the infrastructure, the digital infrastructure needed to kind of create a hub of innovation and digital uh, of the digital economy. The other part of the story is that um, the development plan, the Kenya Vision 2030 plan, uh, in which Konza was conceived, uh, was launched in 2008, so around the time of the global financial crisis. And in this period, Western companies and Western investors had kind of um, uh, had less liquidity, less appetite for uh, overseas investment. And that's another reason why. Um, and as a consequence, there were, there were less um, uh, uh, export credits from uh, export credit agencies in, in the West. And that's another reason why the Kenyan uh, state looked for other uh, alternatives. I think Konza Technopolis is um, a very interesting uh, case of a smart city, satellite city, like new city in Africa. And it kind of belongs to a whole set of this kind of like new uh, city experiments that are kind of blossoming and, and cropping up uh, all across the continent. And the point that I want to make around Konza Technopolis is that um, there is a sense that this kind of like new forms of urbanization are one and the same, right? And it is true that they have like similar characteristics. They are kind of like expansions of, ex of existing cities. They are kind of designed to um, um, kind of have the state being a, a promoter of kind of like the construction industry and the real estate industry. industry. But the case of Konza, I think, is interesting because um, the key agenda, the key uh, motivation behind it was first kind of like this project of a nationwide economic transition from, um, from a kind of like an agriculture centric economy to a uh, more advanced uh, service sector. And in fact, the release of land for real estate in Konza hasn't even happened yet. And, um, and the government imposed a moratorium on the surrounding counties to actually halt all developments uh, in the areas until there is a kind of like a, um, an overarching uh, master plan that is now being developed. So that shows that the priority of um, the state uh, and the priority that was injecting into the making of Konza was first about this project of economic transition and only secondarily about real estate, which is something that puts Konza in a kind of in in a in a different uh, uh, in a different place with respect to other kind of master plan expansions of uh, existing cities and other satellite cities, where the kind of real estate component is more central or is the kind of like the starting point. And th this is to say that when we look at, uh, in general, smart cities or new cities in, 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 uh, in Africa, we need to consider the kind of like the different rationalities and the different priorities that different states have. And of course, they're all different from uh, one another.